London is the capital and largest city of England and the United Kingdom. The city stands on the River Thames in the southeast of England, at the head of its 50-mile estuary leading to the North Sea. London has been a major settlement for two millennia, and was originally called Londinium, which was founded by the Romans. The City of London, London's ancient core and financial centre, an area of just 1.12 square miles and colloquially known as the Square Mile, retains boundaries that closely follow its medieval limits. The adjacent city of Westminster has for centuries been the location of much of the national government. 31 additional boroughs north and south of the river also comprise modern London. The London region is governed by the Mayor of London and the London Assembly. London is one of the world's most important global cities. It exerts considerable influence upon the arts, commerce, education, entertainment, fashion, finance, healthcare, media, professional services, research and development, tourism and transportation. It is one of the largest financial centers in the world and in 2019, London had the second highest number of ultra-high net worth individuals in Europe, after Paris. And in 2020, London had the second highest number of billionaires of any city in Europe, after Moscow. London's universities form the largest concentration of higher education institutes in Europe, and London is home to highly ranked institutions such as Imperial College London in Natural and Applied Sciences, the London School of Economics, as well as the Comprehensive University College London. In 2012, London became the first city to have hosted three modern Summer Olympic Games. London has a diverse range of people and cultures, and more than 300 languages are spoken in the region. Its estimated mid-2018 municipal population was roughly 9 million, which made it the third most populous city in Europe. London accounts for 13.4% of the UK population. Greater London build-up area is the fourth most populous in Europe, after Istanbul, Moscow, and Paris, with 9,787,426 inhabitants at the 2011 census. The London metropolitan area is the third most populous in Europe, after Istanbul and the Moscow metropolitan area, with 14,040,163 inhabitants in 2016. London contains four World Heritage Sites, the Tower of London, Kew Gardens, the site comprising the Palace of Westminster, Westminster Abbey, and St. Margaret's Church, and the historic settlement in Greenwich where the Royal Observatory, Greenwich defines the Prime Meridian and Greenwich Mean Time. Other landmarks include Buckingham Palace, the London Eye, Piccadilly Circus, St. Paul's Cathedral, Tower Bridge, Trafalgar Square and the Shard. London has numerous museums, galleries, libraries and sporting events. These include the British Museum, National Gallery, Natural History Museum, Tate Modern, British Library and West End Theatres. The London Underground is the oldest rapid transit system in the world. Toponymy. London is an ancient name, already attested in the 1st century AD, usually in the Latinized form Londinium. For example, handwritten Roman tablets recovered in the city originating from AD 6570-80 -80 include the word Londinio. Over the years, the name has attracted many mythicizing explanations. The earliest attested appears in Geoffrey of Monmouth's Historia Regum Britanniae, written around 1136. Modern scientific analyses of the name must account for the origins of the different forms found in early sources. Latin, Old English, and Welsh with reference to the known developments over time of sounds in those different languages. It is agreed that the name came into these languages from common Brythonic. Recent work tends to reconstruct the lost Celtic form of the name as asterisk Londingen or something similar. This was adapted into Latin as Londinium and borrowed into Old English, the ancestor language of English. The toponymy of the common Brythonic form is much debated. A prominent explanation was Richard Coates's 1998 argument that the name derived from pre-Celtic Old European asterisk Loenida, meaning, river too wide to ford. Coates suggested that this was a name given to the part of the River Thames which flows through London. From this, the settlement gained the Celtic form of its name, asterisk Loanadonjon. 
However, most work has accepted a Celtic origin for the name, and recent studies have favored an explanation along the lines of a Celtic derivative of a Proto-Indo-European root asterisk len, combined with the Celtic suffix asterisk injo or asterisk anjo. Peter Shriver has specifically suggested, on these grounds, that the name originally meant, place that floods. Until 1889, the name, London, applied officially only to the city of London, but since then it has also referred to the county of London and to Greater London. In writing, London is, on occasion, colloquially contracted to LDN. Such usage originated in SMS language, and is often found, on a social media user profile, suffixing an alias or handle. History. Prehistory. In 1993, the remains of a Bronze Age bridge were found on the South Foreshore, upstream of Vauxhall Bridge. This bridge either crossed the Thames or reached a now lost island in it. Two of those timbers were radiocarbon dated to between 1750 BC and 1285 BC. In 2010, the foundations of a large timber structure, dated to between 4800 BC and 4500 BC, were found on the Thames's south foreshore, downstream of Vauxhall Bridge. The function of the Mesolithic structure is not known. Both structures are on the south bank where the river Ephra flows into the Thames. Roman London. Although there is evidence of scattered Brythonic settlements in the area, the first major settlement was founded by the Romans about four years after the invasion of AD 43. This lasted only until around AD 61, when the Iceni tribe led by Queen Boudicca stormed it, burning the settlement to the ground. The next, heavily planned, incarnation of Londinium prospered, and it superseded Colchester as the capital of the Roman province of Britannia in 100. At its height in the 2nd century, Roman London had a population of around 60,000. Anglo-Saxon and Viking period London. With the collapse of Roman rule in the early 5th century, London ceased to be a capital, and the walled city of Londinium was effectively abandoned. Although Roman civilization continued in the area of St. Martin in the fields until around 450. From around 500, an Anglo-Saxon settlement known as Londonich developed slightly west of the old Roman city. By about 680, the city had regrown into a major port, although there is little evidence of large-scale production. From the 820s repeated Viking assaults brought decline. Three are recorded. Those in 851 and 886 succeeded, while the last, in 994, was rebuffed. The Vikings established Dane law over much of eastern and northern England. Its boundaries stretched roughly from London to Chester. It was an area of political and geographical control imposed by the Viking incursions which was formally agreed by the Danish warlord, Guthrum and the West Saxon King Alfred the Great in 886. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle recorded that Alfred, refounded, London in 886. Archaeological research shows that this involved abandonment of Londonich and a revival of life and trade within the old Roman walls. London then grew slowly until about 950, after which activity increased dramatically. By the 11th century, London was beyond all comparison the largest town in England. Westminster Abbey, rebuilt in the Romanesque style by King Edward the Confessor, was one of the grandest churches in Europe. Winchester had previously been the capital of Anglo-Saxon England, but from this time on, London became the main forum for foreign traders and the base for defense in time of war. In the view of Frank Stenton, it had the resources, and it was rapidly developing the dignity and the political self-consciousness appropriate to a national capital. Middle Ages. After winning the Battle of Hastings, William, Duke of Normandy was crowned King of England in the newly completed Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day 1066. William constructed the Tower of London, the first of the many Norman castles in England to be rebuilt in stone, in the southeastern corner of the city, to intimidate the native inhabitants. In 1097, William II began the building of Westminster Hall, close by the Abbey of the same name. The hall became the basis of a new palace of Westminster. In the 12th century, the institutions of central government, which had hitherto accompanied the Royal English Court as it moved around the country, grew in size and sophistication and became increasingly fixed in one place. For most purposes this was Westminster, although the royal treasury, having been moved from Winchester, came to rest in the tower. While the city of Westminster developed into a true capital in governmental terms, its distinct neighbor, the city of London, remained England's largest city and principal commercial center, and it flourished under its own unique administration, 
the Corporation of London. In 1100, its population was around 18,000. By 1300 it had grown to nearly 100,000. Disaster struck in the form of the Black Death in the mid-14th century, when London lost nearly a third of its population. London was the focus of the Peasants' Revolt in 1381. London was also a center of England's Jewish population before their expulsion by Edward I in 1290. Violence against Jews took place in 1190, after it was rumored that the new king had ordered their massacre after they had presented themselves at his coronation. In 1264 during the Second Barons' War, Simone de Montfort's rebels killed 500 Jews while attempting to seize records of deaths. Early modern. During the Tudor period the Reformation produced a gradual shift to Protestantism, and much of London property passed from church to private ownership, which accelerated trade and business in the city. In 1475, the Hanseatic League set up its main trading base of England in London, called the Stalhof or Steelyard. It existed until 1853, when the Hanseatic cities of Lübeck, Bremen and Hamburg sold the property to Southeastern Railway. Woolen cloth was shipped undyed and undressed from 14th, 15th century London to the nearby shores of the Low Countries, where it was considered indispensable. But the reach of English maritime enterprise hardly extended beyond the seas of Northwest Europe. The commercial route to Italy and the Mediterranean Sea normally lay through Antwerp and over the Alps. Any ships passing through the Strait of Gibraltar to or from England were likely to be Italian or Ragusan. Upon the reopening of the Netherlands to English shipping in January 1565, there ensued a strong outburst of commercial activity. The Royal Exchange was founded, mercantilism grew, and monopoly trading companies such as the East India Company were established, with trade expanding to the New World. London became the principal North Seaport, with migrants arriving from England and abroad. The population rose from an estimated 50,000 in 1530 to about 225,000 in 1605. In the 16th century William Shakespeare and his contemporaries lived in London at a time of hostility to the development of the theatre. By the end of the Tudor period in 1603, London was still very compact. There was an assassination attempt on James I in Westminster, in the gunpowder plot on 5 November 1605. In 1637, the government of Charles I attempted to reform administration in the area of London. The plan called for the corporation of the city to extend its jurisdiction and administration over expanding areas around the city. Fearing an attempt by the Crown to diminish the liberties of London, a lack of interest in administering these additional areas, or concern by city guilds of having to share power, the corporation refused. Later called, the Great Refusal. This decision largely continues to account for the unique governmental status of the city. In the English Civil War the majority of Londoners supported the parliamentary cause. After an initial advance by the Royalists in 1642, culminating in the battles of Brentford and Turnham Green, London was surrounded by a defensive perimeter wall known as the Lines of Communication. The lines were built by up to 20,000 people, and were completed in under two months. The fortifications failed their only test when the New Model Army entered London in 1647, and they were leveled by Parliament the same year. London was plagued by disease in the early 17th century, culminating in the Great Plague of 1665-1666, which killed up to 100,000 people, or a fifth of the population. The Great Fire of London broke out in 1666 in Pudding Lane in the city and quickly swept through the wooden buildings. Rebuilding took over 10 years and was supervised by Robert Hooke as Surveyor of London. In 1708 Christopher Wren's masterpiece, St. Paul's Cathedral was completed. During the Georgian era, new districts such as Mayfair were formed in the west. New bridges over the Thames encouraged development in South London. In the east, the Port of London expanded downstream. London's development as an international financial centre matured for much of the 1700s. In 1762, George III acquired Buckingham House and it was enlarged over the next 75 years. During the 18th century, London was dogged by crime, and the Bow Street Runners were established in 1750 as a professional police force. In total, more than 200 offences were punishable by death, including petty theft. Most children born in the city died before reaching their third birthday. The coffee house became a popular place to debate ideas, with growing literacy and the development of the printing press making news widely available, and Fleet Street became the center of the British press. 
Following the invasion of Amsterdam by Napoleonic armies, many financiers relocated to London and the first London International issue was arranged in 1817. Around the same time, the Royal Navy became the world-leading war fleet, acting as a serious deterrent to potential economic adversaries of the United Kingdom. The repeal of the Corn Laws in 1846 was specifically aimed at weakening Dutch economic power. London then overtook Amsterdam as the leading international financial centre. According to Samuel Johnson, you find no man, at all intellectual, who is willing to leave London. No, sir, when a man is tired of London, he is tired of life, for there is in London all that life can afford. Samuel Johnson, 1777. Late Modern and Contemporary. London was the world's largest city from C.1831 to 1925, with a population density of 325 people per hectare. London's overcrowded conditions led to cholera epidemics, claiming 14,000 lives in 1848, and 6,000 in 1866. Rising traffic congestion led to the creation of the world's first local urban rail network. The Metropolitan Board of Works oversaw infrastructure expansion in the capital and some of the surrounding counties. It was abolished in 1889 when the London County Council was created out of those areas of the counties surrounding the capital. London was bombed by the Germans during the First World War, and during the Second World War, the Blitz and other bombings by the German Luftwaffe killed over 30,000 Londoners, destroying large tracts of housing and other buildings across the city. The 1948 Summer Olympics were held at the original Wembley Stadium, at a time when London was still recovering from the war. From the 1940s onwards, London became home to many immigrants, primarily from Commonwealth countries such as Jamaica, India, Bangladesh and Pakistan, making London one of the most diverse cities worldwide. In 1951, the Festival of Britain was held on the South Bank. The Great Smog of 1952 led to the Clean Air Act 1956, which ended the pea soup fogs, for which London had been notorious. Primarily starting in the mid-1960s, London became a centre for the worldwide youth culture, exemplified by the swinging London subculture associated with the King's Road, Chelsea and Carnaby Street. The role of trendsetter was revived during the punk era. In 1965 London's political boundaries were expanded to take into account the growth of the urban area and a new Greater London Council was created. During the Troubles in Northern Ireland, London was subjected to bombing attacks by the Provisional Irish Republican Army for two decades, starting with the Old Bailey bombing in 1973. Racial inequality was highlighted by the 1981 Brixton riot. Greater London's population declined steadily in the decades after the Second World War, from an estimated peak of 8.6 million in 1939 to around 6.8 million in the 1980s. The principal ports for London moved downstream to Felixstowe and Tilbury, with the London Docklands area becoming a focus for regeneration, including the Canary Wharf development. This was born out of London's ever-increasing role as a major international financial centre during the 1980s. The Thames Barrier was completed in the 1980s to protect London against tidal surges from the North Sea. The Greater London Council was abolished in 1986 which left London without a central administration until 2000 when London-wide government was restored, with the creation of the Greater London Authority. To celebrate the start of the 21st century, the Millennium Dome, London Eye and Millennium Bridge were constructed. On 6 July 2005 London was awarded the 2012 Summer Olympics, making London the first city to stage the Olympic Games three times. On 7 July 2005, Three London underground trains and a double-decker bus were bombed in a series of terrorist attacks. In 2008, Time named London alongside New York City and Hong Kong as Nylongkong, hailing it as the world's three most influential global cities. In January 2015, Greater London's population was estimated to be 8.63 million, the highest level since 1939. During the Brexit referendum in 2016, the UK as a whole decided to leave the European Union, but a majority of London constituencies voted to remain in the EU.